Hello and welcome to another video on Back of the Net and today it's time for another flashback. And I'm here with Tony Funnel. How are you doing, Tone? Evening, all right. Fantastic, mate. Fantastic. And we're going to have a little look at, uh, at your pictures and have a little chat. But before we move on to this week's flashback, uh, you wanted to say some things about last week's flashback. Yeah, well, as I said last week, my, the game that I had in Vancouver, my game time got limited in the end because they brought some new players over. But overall, what I learned out there and the experience I got from playing, you know, with quality coaches and playing with players and against players that were really good uh, was invaluable to me, you know, at, at my the stage of my career was in. But before we carry on with that, I just wanted to backtrack to last week when we were talking about Pele. Ah, yes. A few people have asked me, you know, why was he so special? Uh, and why was it special to play against him? Yeah, I suppose there's a kind of generational thing here, isn't there, in understanding who, who he was and how great he was. I mean, he is kind of widely regarded as the greatest player of all time, isn't he? Yes, definitely. Uh, and I've got some stats now that, that you found, Tony, in front of me. Uh, he, he played his first game, professional game, at only 15. He played for Brazil at 16. He scored a hat-trick by for Brazil at 17 in the World Cup. He's got three World Cup trophies. <laughs> He's got the most World Cup assists with Brazil. He's the all-time top scorer for Brazil with 95. I mean, Brazil, think about how good Brazil teams have been. And he's the greatest player. And there isn't really a question in this that has ever no. played for Brazil. Um, so, yeah, he's got Guinness Book uh, World Records for the amount of goals. Like, 1,279 in 1,363 games. I mean, I mean, I did include friendlies as well, but um, the majority of those games weren't friendlies. They was mm. either playing, you know, for Santos or for Brazil. But it, I, he also he won. It was voted the Player of the Century in 1999, and you know, as we're going back 40 odd years. They never had the Ballon d'Or then. Ah, uh, okay. And uh, in 2016, France football looked back to see who they would have given it to if it had gone back to that era. And uh, Pelé would have won it seven times. Seven times. Wow. That's incredible. Which would, isn't it? Which would be the record. So. Yeah, I don't think anyone's won it seven times, have they, in, in no, the modern era? six. Six? Yeah. Who's six? Do you know? Messi. Uh, of course it is. What a silly yeah. question. What a silly <laughs> question. Uh, yeah, so um, undoubtedly uh, the best, as it's, as we sit here, Tony, talking, probably the best footballer of all time. Um, yes, definitely. It's going to take some toppling, isn't it? It's going to be really hard, even for Mr. Messi, who um, I don't – the other thing about him um, – is that Pele, he played for quite a long time, didn't he? Oh, yeah, he is. He didn't, he didn't retire too young, so, but he was still able to maintain playing at a very, very high standard. Yeah, and he was getting clobbered week in, week out. Yeah, I bet he was. That's a long career, isn't it? A long career in the spotlight. Yeah. He was an ambassador for um, football. Yeah. He's done everything. Yeah, lovely guy. I'm sure. So yeah, um, brilliant. Yeah, and it was his birthday last week, which I think we mentioned last time. But um, yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, that's enough about one legend. Let's move on to another. Uh, <laughs> Tony, we're going to have a look at some pictures of, of things that uh, you've got from your press clippings. So have a look at this picture here. Now, what am I looking at here, Tony? Yeah, that's the uh, full Southampton squad, including the directors all sitting there as well. Yeah, the apprentices down at the bottom. And Wait. you'll see uh, David Peets there, Ian Turner, uh, Nick Holmes, Phil Boyer, Tim McDougall, Peter Osgood, Chris Nickel. Wow. We did have a good, very good side at the, 
at that time. Where are you, Tony? I am next. Actually, Vaughan supporters, just look for Tony Seeley and you'll see me next to Tony Seeley. Oh, Seeley's yeah. Back yeah, there. yeah. Like that. <laughs> That's lovely. That's great. That's a fantastic photo. You have very fond memories of playing in that team, yeah? Yes. Yeah, definitely so. Yeah. Brilliant. That's amazing. That's amazing. How do you think that team would do today? Uh, it's so difficult to, to gauge 40 years ago to today. Yeah. Um, football is a lot quicker. Players are so much more fitter nowadays. Yeah. Very difficult question to answer. It is. But then on the other hand, Tony, I was watching a bit of um, of the, our game against Watford and, you know, you see a bit of angst, antics, don't you? And you think, imagine if those players today were trying to play then, you know, they it just wouldn't, it just wouldn't happen, would it? No. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, funny enough, you, you've, you've led me into a story. Oh, brilliant. So, okay. Yeah, you just made me think of a story. And th this is true. Back when I was at Southampton, I wasn't in the... Um, the squad for the match is a midweek match. So I trained during the day and then I went back to my digs afterwards and I'd had a full dinner and pudding at my digs. Then I got in the car and drove to the Dell. And when I got there, remember back in those days, the squad was 12. So it was 11 and one sub. Yeah. When I got to the ground, I found out that someone had fallen ill. So the first thing I'd done was get myself down the dressing room as quick as possible, walking around, getting myself noticed. And then it did the trick because um, a little bit later, the boss, Laurie McMenemy, come up and said, get changed, Bonnie lad, your sub tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow okay and so <laughs> my landlord was actually watching the game on the halfway line and they announced the team and the substitute tony funnel before the game and he looked around turned around to his mate and says i can't believe this an hour ago i've sat with him he's at a full dinner <laughs> and i'm <laughs> substitute oh no you, you wouldn't get that nowadays no you wouldn't did you get on I'm not to be fair, I can't remember. I remember everything I've told you, but yeah. I don't know if I come on. And there's no way I'm going to say I came on and scored and was a hero. <laughs> I can't remember, but I, I just know that was a fact what happened. Are you superstitious yeah. at all, Tony, when it comes to football? Did you ever get into that? Because you hear some players and they've got a very strict routine and then something happens and, and then something good happens, so then they have to bring that into their routine. I know Eddie Howe. Got, got quite superstitious. What about you? Is that is that a thing? No, not really. But saying that, I do remember one day I was walking upstairs to Laurie's office. And just as I was walking upstairs, he was walking down and he told me, turn back around that way because he didn't want to pass me on the stairs. Oh, really? So, yeah, so he was superstitious about that for sure. That's really interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. It's another fact. It's another fact. Yeah. Uh, speaking of those days when you when you were there and you were playing, let's have another little look here. So we got. Uh, so this is after you've come back, Tony. From yeah, from that's Canada. right. That's that's the reserve game. Uh, early on, um, I'll tell you what happened when when I arrived back from Southampton. Uh, the season had already started and I went straight back into training and matches for the reserves. I was thinking this afternoon, everyone talks about footballers nowadays. They need a rest because they've got to rest their mind or their body and they're playing too many games, this, that and the other. Well, when you think of it, I came from non-league football and I worked on a building site through the week played football on a Saturday and midweek games for either my non-league team or for the county side. I played Sunday football as well. Mm. And then through the summer, I played six aside competitions. And then I joined Southampton, went on and played for Vancouver 
I said, I'm not a rest yet, have I? No. Went on to play for Vancouver, came back to England and started playing for Southampton straight away. And um, as soon as I arrived back, I was straight in the reserves and I'd got seven goals. This is true. Seven goals in the first three games. Wow. And that's why I made my debut on the, you know, from the substitutes bench. Yeah. In the very first game. So we've got we've got another picture here of uh, of you in the in the reserves. The same these the same photo, didn't they? Uh, funnel skill, one of the few bright spots. I still use that same photo now. <laughs> well, well done, you. There is a lovely photo, Tony. That is, that is, um, yeah. So it all went really, really well on the on the return, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And that's it. I think got... I just had so much confidence at the time. Yeah, and it is, you know, they, they do say, don't they, about you know, how the confidence plays a massive part. Yeah. Plus, also, we had a very good reserve team. And a very good first team as well. So mm. whatever team I was playing in, I had good players around me. Yeah. And it does make a difference. And we've got some more here, Tony. Are these are these from that was just after I arrived back and uh I was just that was just before I made my debut. Wow. And that's interesting, isn't it? That in football in those days, of course, it says here if Tony Funnel makes his debut for Southampton against Brighton tomorrow, it will be a reward for his persistence. So you know. Papers were following you that, you know, they were aware of you as, as an up and comer. They've been looking at you in the reserve games. They knew where you'd been. And also um, they kind of sort of had a feeling that you might, you might be coming on, didn't they? Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, I think I did as well. Yeah. You know, or we, to be fair, you've got to have belief in yourself. And because I was doing so well, I did expect to be in the squad or a sub. Yeah. But, you know, it did take a lot of work. There's some lovely words here from, from Laurie as well. Uh, uh, this boy is on the verge of getting into the side. It will be a just reward for his enthusiasm. And that's always continued with you, to be fair, Ted, isn't it? Enthusiasm for everything. Oh, definitely, yeah. That's right, yeah. Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, I, yeah it's nice to look back on, really. Completely. And then we've got another one here. Now, what a headline. That's brilliant, isn't it? Boy Funnel, Shame Stars. Yeah, that's what I came that was the day my debut when I came on as sub. That there's more to the job than strolling around and looking good. Big money stars <laughs> can be temperamental too. When the crowd moaned a woeful Alan Bull, cool, he won't thank you, would he, would he for reading this? Uh, he turned and made a rude gesture. Goodness me. Uh, okay, Funnel, who was a player for Eastbourne United last season hadn't been spoiled by the big wage packets and this is when you came on you scored was it no i didn't score no i just uh i think peachy obviously scored that day oh yeah, but, David um, Peach, didn't you? yeah i came on and uh well i put myself about i think what they were basically saying was it, it looked obviously like Samantha had struggled for a couple of games yeah and if it, things weren't going right for the team. They weren't playing well. And when I came in, I was obviously a breath of fresh air. And yeah. I had so much energy and enthusiasm. I was I was everywhere up front. This happens with teams, isn't it? You need that injection of something new, something fresh. And it, it sounds like you, you started to bring that. Yeah, definitely, yeah. And then we've got this one, Tony, which is the cream of the crop here, isn't it? Yeah, that's my full debut. Yeah. And uh, I was lucky enough to score. Well, I don't know if it was lucky, Tony. I think well-deserved, probably. Look at that. There we go. Funnel, Sparks, Saints, victory. Tony Funnel crowned his full football league debut by scoring the goal, which put Saints on their way to an impressive victory. So was it the first goal of the game? I don't know if I scored the first goal in that game. Uh... I don't think it was the first goal, but I'm not quite sure. But it, be it definitely made all the hard work worth yeah, it. Yeah, completely. Completely. That's fantastic, Tony. That's absolutely brilliant. And uh, you've now broken into the first team. You've made a great 
impression on everyone on your on your first appearance for the first team and then when you've come on for your full debut you've scored a goal so more good things to come yeah more, more to come next week fantastic that was brilliant tony absolutely brilliant i enjoyed looking at those with you uh and i hope you all enjoyed looking at them as well and with that uh that is enough from us so adios oh,